In the last lesson, we handled the logic for creating a new user. But for a lot of the people that are familiar with security, I'm sure you guys may have had a little bit of a heart attack because we did something that's very, very frowned upon. We took the user's password and we just stored it as plain text within our database. And some of you might be thinking, well, what's the problem with that? Right? It's in our secure database. Well, right, our database is secure for now, but there are hacks. There are things that can happen. You know, these, uh, all of these records could potentially get leaked in some fashion. And it's very dangerous to just have a user's password just stored in plain text like this that anyone can read. So when it comes to working with passwords and databases, what you always want to do is you want to hash the password. So we never store the actual password in our database. We just store a hash of it so that if it does get leaked, well, no biggie because it's ultimately just a hash. You can't really reverse engineer that hash and get the original password back. So in this lesson, we're going to focus on uh, hashing the password when a user first registers so that we never actually store the raw password within the database. And within our Fast API documentation, they have a good article that kind of covers how to do that. So if you go under uh, security and then OAuth2 with password, it'll show you what we actually need to do when it comes to hashing. So there's two libraries that we need to install, right? We need passlib, uh, and so that's going to kind of handle the hashing, but we need to actually specify a specific algorithm because passlib can work with different algorithms. One of the more popular ones is bcrypt. So we'll need two different libraries. We'll need the passlib and then the bcrypt library, and we can just do that by running pip install passlib bcrypt. So I'll just copy this. We'll go to our application, and I'm just going to run that command. All right, and then let's just do a pip freeze just to make sure it got installed. And we see passlib there now, and then do we see bcrypt? And we see bcrypt in there as well. So we've got both of the libraries that we need to actually perform the hashing. So let's go to our main file, and somewhere up at the top, uh, I'm going to import from passlib dot context import crypto context and then what we need to do is some place below that we have to define this setting right here so we do pwd underscore context equals and then we reference that crypto context and then here we say schemas equals brackets bcrypt and then we'll do deprecated. Equals auto. All right, and so basically all we're doing is. And this should actually be a string. Uh, all we're doing right here is we're telling passlib what is the default hashing algorithm or what hashing algorithm do we want to use? In this case, we want to use bcrypt. So that's all this is doing. Now, when we go to our user registration down here, we have to do a couple things. And so before we actually create the user, we need to actually create the hash of the password. So the first thing is, whoops, that's we're not in JavaScript land. We're going to hash the password, which can be retrieved from user.password, right? Because that's going to be stored inside this object. And so how do we exactly do that? Well, what we can do is all we have to do is reference that password context, right? If you forgot what that is, just go all the way up to the top. That's this command right here. So we reference password context and we call the hash method. So that's going to perform a hash and then we just pass in user.password. And then we can store this in a variable called uh, hashed underscore password. And then what we're going to do here is we're going to take the user.password and we're going to set that now to the new hashed password. So that's going to update the Pydantic user model. And then at that point, we can just leave everything as is, right? So we hashed the password, so we got a hash, and then we stored it under user password, and then everything else can just be kept the same. So let's actually try this out. And let me just double check to see there's no errors and there isn't. So let's create a brand new user and I'll call this mark at gmail.com. Same password, that's fine. Send it. Looks like everything worked. And then let's just run this. And then if you see that most recent user, you can see that we no longer store 
the raw password, we store a hash of it. And so that's going to help it be a little bit more secure because if it does leak, then you know the hackers will only get access to a hashed password and they can't exactly uh, convert it back to the original password. That's the great part about hashing. It's a one-way street. We hash it, we only get the final password. You can never put it back into a function to convert it back to a password. Now, one thing I want to do is I want to extract all of the hashing logic and store it in its own function. So I'm going to create a new file. I'm going to call this utils.py. These are This file is just going to hold a bunch of utility functions. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to our main file. And I'm going to remove this line or cut it. And we're going to paste it into my utils file. And then we're also going to cut this out. And we're going to move all of this logic into here. And then we're going to define a function that we can call. And I'm going to call this function hash. And it's going to take a password, which is going to be of type string. And all it's going to do is it's going to return pwd context dot hash of whatever the password the user passes in. And that way we uh, really extract and place all of the hashing logic into one file or one function so we don't have to import all of this nonsense into other files. And then in our main.py file, we can import utils. And then down here, what we can do is, instead of calling this, I can just call utils.hash. And then we'll pass in the user.password again. And this shouldn't really change anything else in our code. But let's try this again. I'll create a, I'll just add a one here. Send seems to work. Let's just double check. And the second user, the password was properly hashed.